good morning. Today we will discuss correspondence analysis. Correspondence analysis is a multivariate analysis. Multivariate analysis. Mm, it has two components. One, it deals with categorical data. It deals with categorical data. and then it converts this data to certain distance distance using those distance values it create per, per perceptual map create perceptual map okay. so the one of the advantage of correspondence analysis is that that it can it can work with categorical data by categorical data we means the nominal or ordinal data nominal and or ordinal data actually in correspondence analysis the data are observed in terms of counts or frequency in terms of frequency. For example, let there are three age group of people age 1, age 2 and age 3. Now, we can see they are food habits, food habits habit 1, habit 2 and habit 3. Now, if we see a particular population and we may find that in general this age group they are with this food habit there may be n 1 1, n 1 2, n 1 3, n 2 1, n 2 2, n 2 3, 3 1, 3 2, 3 3. Now, this n i j this is number of observations or I can say counts or say that frequency that is frequency data. The question comes that is there any relationship between these frequencies observed with the variable called age which is categorized into three groups is there any relationship between the observations here for example, this with the food habits is there relationship between age and food habit in realizing this frequency counts. So, all those things can be captured through correspondence analysis. Okay. Now, if we go back to the history of correspondence analysis, we will find that correspondence analysis was developed by Jean Paul Banekri and his colleagues in 1960s. This is a geometric approach on multivariate descriptive data analysis. So, the, the way uh, Jean Paul Banekri and his team developed this correspondence analysis that same approach we will follow here. So, <coughs> let us see that what uh, correspondence analysis can do. Correspondence analysis is a dimension reduction technique similar to factor analysis, but extend factor analysis in two counts handling of categorical variable particularly measured in nominal scale. Developing perceptual maps of extracted components. So, what I mean to say here that you require to develop a contingency table, contingency table or cross table both are same when you say about contingency table or, or cross table this is basically bivariate uh, table and here you see although age is a continuous variable but age is made as a it is a nominal variable by categorizing into three groups 
but food habit is definitely a nominal variable. So, if you want to use correspondence analysis, you have to have the variables of interest in nominal scale. Now, if you if you use ordinal data also, it will be treated as nominal data. If you use have continuous data, then you convert them to nominal data. And the sole purpose is to understand whether there is correspondence between between the observed frequencies and the variables considered either independently or jointly. It is similar to in case of um, ANOVA, we have seen that there are two things in ANOVA, one is main effects and interaction effects. Now, main effects related to the factors like your age and food habits interaction effect between the factors. So, same similar way, but in MANOVA uh, in ANOVA what is required? It is required the data the response variable should be continuous in nature, here it is different and correspondence analysis has also relation similarity with uh, log linear model. In log linear model, we also try to find out main, main effects and interaction effects using certain parameter, but there are definitely lot of differences between all the correspondence analysis between these models. First of all, correspondence analysis uses frequency data, log linear model also uses frequency data, but log linear model will not go for dimension reduction, correspondence analysis will go for dimension reduction also. So, it is one way uh, principal component analysis or similar to factor factor analysis like in another way it is having also a capability to identify the relationship between the categories across variables, categories between variables and it also has the potential to create map by seeing the map we are in a position to talk about the association among the categories of a variables and between the categories of um, two variables the associations can be carefully interpreted. Okay. Now, see <coughs> what are the different names uh, are we find in the literature related to correspondence analysis, dual scaling, method of reciprocal averages, optimal scaling, canonical analysis of contingency tables, categorical discriminant analysis, homogeneity analysis, quantification of qualitative data. What is in what is mean? and seen also that it in these different names and uh, that similar to correspondence analysis or in fact, the correspondence analysis is used in the literature and also published. Now, correspondence analysis another important issue here is that it captures the non-linearity between the variables represented in the contingency table. So, let us see that <coughs> how correspondence analysis work. Now, this this one we will be representing in terms of correspondence analysis process that process model sum is inputs, then activities, then outputs. Okay. Inputs means what correspondence analysis requires. So, if you see that it requires a some certain number of variables which are categorical variables, then you have to create a contingency table. Contingency table of frequency data, frequency data then what it will do? It will do three things capture measure of association captures 
major of association then compute feet measures and then create perceptual maps. So, what are the outputs then? There are some one is that perceptual maps, perceptual maps, then second output is different feed measures and actually we will get many numerical numerical measures numerical measures for interpretation for interpretation of C A results. Okay. So, that means, if we want to use um, correspondence analysis for some purposes, what you have to do? You have to first find out what are the variables of interest list those variables, collect data, then what will be the data structure? Data structure will be similar to like this i 1 to n number of observations. Now, your categorical variable 1, categorical variable 2, similarly categorical variable may be p, then what is required? What will be required? Suppose observation one, it may fall with one categorical variable, with some category, some category. Suppose it is basically x c one category, it is x c two category, x c p category. Similarly, different categories. So when there are more than two variables with multiple categories, then you 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 require multiple correspondence analysis to include all, all the categorical variable. But if we consider only two variables like this x 1, x 2 with this category, then you will be able to develop suppose you write x 1 here and this side x 2 and you know it has category, category 1, category 2 to suppose category k and it has category, uh, category 1, category 2 suppose category k k. Then, you, you will finally, get a frequency table like this n 1 1 n 1 2 n 1 n well, I think it is k. So, if it is k. So, similar table will be. So, that means, your data will be coming like this and I will show you one example and, and from this data you take two variables at a time with their these are the categories of the variables related variables using this and n you will be able to find out this correspondence table or contingency table you will be able to find out this contingency table. Now, the sum total of all these n values that will be capital N because you have considered n number of observations this is small n sorry not capital n small n. So, we are considering the small n. So, n 1 1 n 1 2 what I what do I mean? I mean to say that some summit i equal to suppose if I say this is k j equal to n 1 2 capital K n i j this will be n some total of all will be n. So, this is our data. Now, from this data this way you are getting the contingency table or correspondence table. If you have more than two variable two categorical variable you have to go for multiple correspondence or contingency table and or we can say the nested contingency tables. Okay. Then <coughs> what we are trying to say that what are the activities that will be performed? You have to first find out the measure of association. How do you find out this measure of decision issue? And we will discuss next 
then once you find out the association measure and then you will you will uh, using those values you do some action and then some results you get and based on these results you find out the fit measures and finally maps you will create so let us start with a case study because it will help us to understand cf an organization which manufactures a diagnostic medical equipment this is our case the organization does assembly of final device and has outsourced all the components required for the final assembly this one is one of our case study paper that is reference is Rabindran S and Maiti 2012 a framework for integrated analysis of quality defects in supply chain ASQ quality management journal volume 19 issue 1 page number 34 to 52. Now let us see that what is this case study uh, in totality that we found out that that compare if we see the what are the different components uh, that sheet metal component plastic and non metal component fabrication machining comp machining circuit board and electronics cable and helmets these are the different uh, components where ultimately defects per million defective parts per million that is captured from six sigma point of view and what we found out that the sheet metal component has having the highest highest uh, defects. So, it is a case so we can say this is the the sheet metal case we have to consider for improvement. Then when we capture the defect data and related data with respect to the sheet metal component what we find that there are four things uh, four categorical variables which can be used to to capture the um, that data set total in totality by this i am not saying that there is not other variables which are contributing to the sheet metal defects it is there but in for the present study what is what has happened with discussion uh, with the um, personnel who are basically working there in this particular company and who are dealing day to day uh, activities related to this assembly operation and um, with discussion with uh, we find that uh, these are the things that can be considered. One is for sheet metal component there is part number box structure component double bend component single bend component flat component that means four categories there are different vendors actually that company is having more than 50 vendors around 70 something vendors are there but four number of vendors they are supplying the sheet metal component so vendor 1 vendor 2 vendor 3 vendor 4 this is another categorical variable. Then we our uh, definitely we want to minimize the defects. So, in order to minimize the defects we what we have done we have first seen that what type of defects are generated during assembly operations or after uh, assembly final product when it is sent to the customers what type of defects are reported plus in house uh, that quality checking what type of defects are identified. Based on this uh, we found that the category of defect defect this is also a categorical variable having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different categories. And then it is obvious that there may be seasonal effect which was which was found after discussion with the personnel personnel involved in this assembly operation January February to September because we have collected data from Jan uh, from January to September of a particular year. So, we could not collect beyond that because uh, the uh, ultimate in this assembly operation where we have concentrated our study that started in this month 
and that was that uh, up to September uh, that data was available. So, by saying this what I mean to say that all variables are categorical in nature. Now, let us see that how do we develop contingency table. So, as there are four categorical variables and we want to take two at a time. So, that we will be able to find out four C 2 contingency tables. So, six contingency tables that means six two a two a relationships will be found out out of these four variables. But let us see one after another. Here categorical data in terms of frequency. So, this is the categories of defects, these are the vendors and what does it mean that vendor 1 supplied components having this B D, B D means uh, B D is whole missing bend dent dimension I think break that is basically bent and dent, B D is bent and dent. D stands for debarring, D M dimension related, F I fastener installation so like this. So, 150 bend then defects can be attributed to vendor 1. Similarly, 142 related to responsible vendor 2 for 146 vendor 3 and vendor 457. So, if we see this particular column what we find that ultimately vendor 4 is having less number of uh, defects related to bent and dent in comparison to other three vendors that is vendor 1, 2 and 3 they are almost equally equally contributing towards defects related to bend and dent. Similar in similar manner you will be able to find out this, this that, that, that means debarring defects, dimension related defects like this. So, if I go for the total what you find out that that vendor 1 1076, vendor 2 1141, vendor 3 1043, vendor 4 1181. But here in, in first case we are finding out the vendor 4 is least contributing whereas, if I see the total we are able to see that this vendor 4 is, contrib is contributing the maximum although with respect to vendor 2 that difference is not that significant. So, that means, there are some some relationship may be what I mean to say as here it is less that means, somewhere it is contributing more. For example, if you see the dimension related things vendor 4 is contributing to 69 defects compared to others where vendor 1 is 207. Okay. <coughs> so, in this manner what I mean to what we mean to say that. So, there may be relationship between the vendors and categories of defects. Okay. So, this table is known as contingency table. Now, we ca you can generate similar contingency table for what are those things first one we have done category of defect versus vendor this is one then category of defect versus you can go for part number then your category of defect versus your time then your vendor versus part number, then you can say vendor versus time, then number is sixth one is your vendor that part number versus time. So, six tables, now six simple correspondence analysis can be done. 
So, we can say this is m 1, m 2. So, like this. So, there will be m 6 model 6 m stands for model. Now, with respect to the first model, what we are going to say the category versus vendor, we have put few questions. What are those questions? What are the similarities and differences among the four vendors with respect to the eight category of defects? So, we are saying that there are eight categories 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, eight categories of defects. Now, we that means if I if I if I want to see the vendor position, then you are basically getting a eight dimensional issue coordinate. When by what I mean to say? I mean to say that category of defects that is B D that is D similarly W. So, if it is dimension 1, dimension 2, this dimension 8 not visible here, not visible here, but it is very what will happen? Now, the vendor 1 has a position suppose somewhere here. So, this one is having 8 coordinate values that means, vendor 1 is measured using this 8 categories in terms of one that values are 150, 137, 207, 91, 76, 210, 185, 20. Vendor 2 coordinate values are like this, vendor 3 coordinate values are like this, vendor 4 coordinate values are like this. What we are saying there then what are the similarities and differences among the 4 vendors? So, we using this, this row, this row, this row values, this row values, we want to see whether there is differences between vendor 1, vendor 2, vendor 3, vendor 4, whether they similar or they dissimilar. Not only vendor 1 to vendor 4 with B D or with D or with D M or with F I. We are talking about vendor dif similarity or differences between vendor 1, vendor 2, vendor 3 and vendor 4 in terms of all the defects. Okay. Second one is what are the similarities and differences among the 8 category of defect with respect to 4 vendors. What does it mean? It simply says that we have 4 vendors, we are now considering a 4 dimensional system that vendor 1, vendor 2, vendor 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, for a particular defect you may be saying, saying that somewhere here in the 4 dimensional space B D is there. Now, what is this B D is point then that coordinates then 150, 142, 146 and 57. Now, if I if we want to know that our this question what are the similarity differences among the 8 categories of defect with respect to 4 vendors. So, we want to see whether B D, D, D M, F I, H M, P, S, W they are similar or dissimilar or if similar how much similar or how much dissimilar that these vendors with respect to uh, sorry with respect to uh, this this as well as this 8 categories with respect to these 4 vendors how they must similar and dissimilar that is what is written here. What are the similarities and differences amongst the 8 category of defects with respect to the 4 vendors. Now, the obviously the third question is what is the relationship between the vendor and the category of defect. These are the vendors and this category of defect. So, when I when I talk about the first one that what are the similarity differences among the four vendor with respect to eight categories of defects, it is similar to main effects of vendor. Second one is similar to main effects of categories of defect, but third question is talking about the interactions between vendor and defects that interactions we are considering here. Okay. Now, the fourth one the can this relationship be represented graphically in a joint low dimensional space, because you have seen that 8 vendor uh, 8 categories of defects if we consider and if we measure vendor 1 to vendor 4 
then a particular vendor has 8 coordinates meaning 8 dimensional issues. So, but again when we are measuring the defects category each of the category with respect to vendor is a 4 dimensional issue. Now, question is the more, more the dimension the complexity is more difficult very difficult to make decisions. So, what do we require? We require to reduce the dimension as well. So, that is why that is the fourth question can this relationship be present represented graphically in a joint to low dimensional piece? It is possible if there is relationship amongst the categories of the defects amongst the vendors as well as between categories of defects and vendors. If there is relationship dependency then the reduction is possible low dimensional reduction is possible. If it is not there they are independent then you cannot reduce the dimension either you, you have to go by the vendor wise that 4 dimensional issue or category wise 8 dimensional issue you cannot reduce reduction, reduction is possible only when there is some dependency some similarity between the and dissimilarity. Okay. So, now we want to see that again repeat the questions question 1 is our that we are basically for vendors your target is vendor similarity and dissimilarity in question 2 category of defects similarity and dissimilarity question 3 what you are trying to say you are trying to find out relationship between vendor and defect category of defects and question 4 you want to reduce the redux dimensional reduction. So, what are the answer to these questions how do we know uh, question number 1 is answered by row profiles row profiles. Please keep in mind that here along the row vendors are there along the rows first row vendor 1 like this that is why when we are talking about that vendor similarity and dissimilarity, I am talking about row profile, but if you change interchange suppose the categories of defects will come along the rows and vendor along the columns then when you talk about row profile it will be related to the categories of the defects. So, it is the way you design the contingency table and accordingly the row profile and column profile will give you the concerned uh, re reply or responses or answers. Now, for categories of defect each column pro row profile is R and it will be column profile that is C. Now, is there any relationship between this or not that we will be capturing through weighted chi square distance. And the final one that is dimension reduction possible or not we will be capturing through singular value decomposition. S V D. Okay. And actually what happened S V D will um, give us different um, diamond, new dimensions, hidden dimensions, latent dimensions and then we will consider two of the most prominent dimensions and then we create perceptual map using this dimensions perceptual maps giving these two we will be seeing the answering the fourth one. Now, let us see that what is row profile.
Okay. So, there are different steps to perform correspondence analysis. The contingency table what you see earlier this one we are defining this as x capital X that 4 vendors 1 2 3 4 8 defects 1 2 8 every everywhere some values are there this is x and this value is x 1 1 this is x 1 2 x 1 8 like this so, similarly x 4 1 x 4 2 x 4 8 this is basically frequency data contingency table whatever way we can define like this. Okay. Now, what is our step 1? Step 1 is you develop correspondence matrix you see what is it in there obtain corresponding matrix z where each element in z is that x i j divided by capital N where capital N is the total number of observations. Okay. So, what I mean to say here I mean to say this 4 4 4 1 this is the total number of defects found for this particular case for I think up to September that is 9 months data then this is capital N. 150 here this is x 1 1 137 is x 1 2. So, we are now creating z 1 1 which will be 150 by 4 4 4 1 that means, each of the element in this x table here will be divided by the total that is what we are talking about here. So, 0 0.034 is nothing but 150 divided by 4 4 4 1 and 4 4 4 1 when divided by 4 4 4 1 this will be 1. So, this is your first step. Okay. Then, so that means, if I write here that what is our step 1? Step 1 is that find out z i j which is x i j by n. Okay. Now, go to step 2 divide each element of matrix z by the respective rho mass. If you see what is rho mass here, now you go back to the original table 1076 divided by 4441 this is what is your rho mass. So, that means, rho total divided by total. So, first step 1 is this step 2 each of these elements will be divided by rho mass. So, that is why what happened 0 0.034 divided by 0 0.242 it is giving you 0 0.139. Okay. So, each of the elements of the z matrix is divided by their corresponding rho mass. So, vendor 1 case each of the element here these elements are divided by this vendor 2 case each of these elements of z matrix is divided by 0 0.257. So, like this. So, let us write down the step 2. Step 2 we are saying that z i j will be divided by rho mass keep in mind the corresponding rho mass. Okay. You see that in the first step 1 the column values mass if you see that column mass is your column mass is uh, this 495 divided by 4441 474 divided by this. So, like this that means the column total divided by the total grand total. So, column total divided by grand total is like this. So, if you sum up rho masses 0 0.242, 0 0.257, 0 0.235, 0 0.260 this will lead to 1. 
if sum of the column masses this will lead to 1. So, while calculating row profile first you are finding out this, this that means correspondent matrix then what you are doing you are basically dividing each of the elements of the corresponding matrix by their corresponding row masses, but see you are not considering column mass here because we are talking about row profiles. Okay. So, now I think you understand now that what is your row profile. So, that vendor 1 position if we consider in terms of row profile. So, that means with respect to this 8 categories of defects. So, vendor 1 position is 0 0.139, 0 0.127, 0 0.192, 0 0.085 like this, vendor 2 like this, vendor 3 like this, vendor 4 like this. So, under 8 dimensions you are basically putting that where is vendor 1 getting me where is vendor 2. So, you are getting this values. So, in the similar manner you can find out the col column profiles step 3 we want to find out. So, this is row profile you got in second stage third stage you want to know the column profile. What you will do again you will basically z i j by column mass that this uh, work you do basically. So, uh, when I talk about divide each element of the corresponding matrix z by the respective column mass this is the case. So, each one this is my original that correspondence matrix z point zero three four is divided by point one 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 this is what is given here 0 0.303 similarly 0 0.287 like this. So, what does, what does it mean? That means, that when you are talking about column profile we are talking about here different categories of defects. So, in a four dimensional space where the dimensions are created by the four vendors where does each category of defect lies. Okay. So, I think that the first that row profile will give you similarity dissimilarity and column of the row variables categories, column profile will give you the similarity and dissimilarity between the column variable categories. Now, we want to combine the two. So, we require to have some other measure what is known as step 4 here that weighted chi square distance. Okay. So, <coughs> weighted chi square distance is calculated like this in our step 4 that weighted chi square distance which we are talking about as d and we are writing this d equal to d r minus half z minus r c transpose into d c minus half. Okay. So, this is basically r stands for row c stands for column. What way it is done now? Now, z what is the z matrix? This you have seen that four categories of 4 vendors cross 8 categories of defect. Now, R which is row profile which is 4 cross 1. So, that means, this one is nothing but 0 0.242, 0 0.257, 0 0.235, 0 0.266. Now, what is your C? C is 8 cross 1. 8 cross 1 that is 0 0.111 in the same manner that 0 0.025. So, if I multiplied this two R C transpose 
this will ultimately lead to 4 cross 1, 1 cross 8. So, 4 cross 8 which is matching with so this one this totality it is a matrix of dimension 4 cross 8. Then what is our d r? You also required to know what is d r? d r here it will be a diagonal matrix where the diagonal elements for this will be the row masses. And for D C it will be the again a diagonal matrix diagonal elements will be the column masses. What is of diagonal elements? 0 in both the cases. Okay. So, what will happen ultimately and then by d minus some mean you are taking the inverse and then square root of the inverse basically what you are doing here. So, if I say like this 4 cross 4 then 8 cross 8 then this will be 4 cross 8 ultimately your resultant matrix will be 4 cross 8 total matrix will be 4 cross 8. This is what is chi square distance and this chi square distance if you use this formulation where your R C D R D C everything is available because you have the contingency table the data is given to you. So, see I have this is R this one my C then I put create a 4 cross 4 matrix putting diagonal all these values we will be getting D R putting diagonal all these values we will be getting D C then you take the that inverse square root of each of the values then. Then you start multiplying, multiplying this with this then the resultant will be multiplied with this. So, ultimately you will be getting this. This is what we are talking about chi square distance. What is the issue here is that you see r and c you are multiplying r and c r is this row mass and this column mass these two you are multiplying these are again mass which is divided by the total these two you are multiplying and you are subtracting from from z original z this z value. So, this value minus this cross this. So, if there is no really uh, independency between these two vendor versus this from the marginal probability concept point of view what we know this joint probability here this will be the um, sum total of the that is the multiplication of the marginal probability for independent case. So, in that case what will happen this cross this or this minus this cross this will become 0 distance will be 0. Hmm. If there is some distance that means there is some relationship between these two sides. Okay. Any problem? I <coughs> I, I do not think that there will be any problem, but it is a uh, very straightforward things. So, what is written here you see D can be used to explain the relationship between vendors and categories of defects this distance, but it is see it is a really difficult proposition it is very easy to say, but when you talk about vendor it has distance with respect to this all categories of defects. Similarly, when you talk about the defects it has also with respect to the vendors. So, it is not as straightforward as the way we think, but even then but this is a beautiful way of see from the categorical data nominal data where no nothing is available 
only some frequency is available now, how viewed nicely you are able to convert to it in a distance measures that is the chi square distance. So, if I know distance, distance is a position, I know one vendor position, another vendor position in terms of distance, so then it is basically it will be possible for me uh, to see the what is the difference in distance and some conclusions can be made up. Then what is required, then we will go for singular value decomposition after step 4 then step 5 is your singular value decomposition. Okay. Now, singular value decomposition uh, I think uh, what is required here that it is a, um, a matrix algebra issue. I think that any matrix can be decomposed depending on the nature of the matrix. If it is a square matrix, you can go for eigen value eigen vector decomposition. When it is not square, then you cannot go for that. So, singular value decomposition can decompose is in non square matrices. For example, in this case our d is 4 into 8. Now, we want this is a not a square matrix 4 cross cross 8 is not a square matrix. What do you want to do? We want to decompose this matrix and uh, we, we want this decomposition is very very interesting. I think in my PCA lecture principal component analysis we have seen that we have decomposed the matrix into eigen value and eigen vectors the way that lambda j some total of j equal to 1 to p lambda j a j a j transpose that since we decompose means one matrix p cross p matrix converted to the this one scalar and with vectors. It is also similar way it is done. Now, you see that S B D what it does it basically partition the D matrix with three matrices U, V and S. In case of eigen value eigen vector you find out that eigen vectors and eigen values here three different matrices we are subtracting that decomposition is taking place where U is a P cross K matrix V is Q cross K matrix and S is a K cross K matrix with diagonal elements this S diagonal elements are S 1 greater than equal to S 2 greater than equal to S k, k is the reduced dimension. What we are trying to say? We have 4 cross 8 matrix. Now, we are saying there is dependency and because of this feature what we are saying that this matrix easily can be can have reduced dimensions. Okay. So, that reduced dimension what is that reduced dimension that k is minimum p minus 1 q minus 1. What is p? p is suppose p is the rows number of rows we have 4 rows we have 8 columns. So, p minus 1 is 4 minus 1 3 q minus 1 is 8 minus 1 7. So, the k can be minimum k is minimum of 3 and 7 which is 3. Now, so that means what I mean to say this 4 cross 8 matrix it can be decomposed into lower dimensions that is the maximum that dimensions will be 3 like principal component we will be extract we can be extracting 3 pieces from this d matrix chi square distance matrix. So, but two component we are always preferable because then the visual interpretation the graphing uh, graphing of the two components all those things will be possible, but three component also possible to map graphically. Okay. So, that means essentially what you are doing then your D matrix which is we are talking about D is P cross Q matrix 
DHP cross Q matrix, this you are creating like this u that is p cross k a s k cross k and v k cross q ok. So, if you say no it is then v transpose right because we want u will be p cross k v will be q cross k and s yes, definitely k cross k. The element of this s, the diagonal element of this s which are s 1, s 2 like s k these are important things, these are the things what we, we want to extract. Getting me? Now, see what we are we are written here s k is the singular value this s k value is known as the singular value for the kth p c. So, that means, what we are saying here we are saying that we are we are able to extract k p c h k principal components s 1 is related to first principal component s 2 related to second principal component like this s k related to kth principal component. So, this is the singular all singular values this singular value if you square it you will be getting eigen value and all of you know by this time that eigen values are the variance com explained component. What is the amount of variance of the original data set captured by the kth principal component in this case is given by s k square. Okay, it is similar to lambda k where lambda k is the eigen value. So, that means, eigen value is the square of singular value. So, represent the weighted variance explained by the kth principal component we will stop here then I will in the next class I will continue with this singular value decomposition approach and we will see with this particular case how ultimately we lead to developing perceptual maps means creating different principal components they are coordinate values then mapping them then finally, what will happen from the numerical measures of C A as well as the maps we want to enter in, in infer about the uh, defect generation process for this particular case what we have considered. Thank you very much.